<laughs> I feel like I'm on um, like a generation game or something. <laughs> or like, like, you could win a holiday in Tenerife <laughs> and a pair of super shoes. <laughs> Go. Can't wait to wear them. Hey guys, it's Tom here from Pro Direct Running. Welcome back to another video. And you might be able to see that I'm with a very special guest today. And for those of you who may have been living under a rock and don't know who Philly is, Philly, could you tell us a little bit about yourself and exactly what we're doing here in Victoria Park today? Yeah, sure. I'm Philly Bowden. I'm an elite runner, marathon runner, coach and YouTuber. And we're here today to test out the new New Balance Supercomp V3 shoe. And yeah, we're gonna put it through its paces in a session. Yeah, Philly's probably gonna drop me on about a six mile tempo around Victoria <laughs> Park. Um, but it should be a great test of the shoe. Philly's had a lot of experience with New Balance, so we're gonna go and sit down now and cover off all of the key stats and specs of the shoe, and then we're gonna lace them up and take them for a spin. So, Philly, as I mentioned in the intro, you've obviously got a wealth of experience with New Balance shoes. I guess maybe first of all, for context, it might be a nice idea to talk about what shoes are currently in your rotation from, from New Balance for an average week and what you use them for. Yeah, so uh, I'm running most of my easy runs in the 1080s at the moment, the V12s. Mm. Uh, and then these are the sort of things that I use for races and sessions. So this is the Fuel Cell RC Elite V2, uh, which is sort of the predecessor, I suppose, to today's shoe. Uh, and that's pretty much it. I use the Rebels for track sessions, but I don't mix it up too much. I kind of stay in my sort of steady mileage shoe for most of the time. So yeah, you've obviously done a lot of miles in the RC Elite V2. You've raced quite extensively in it. Um, what are some of your favorite characteristics of the shoe? And what would you ideally like to see in the update, what we've got here with the, the SC Elite V3? Yeah, I've worn these shoes loads. I raced them this weekend, actually just in a 10K, and they're really comfortable, pretty responsive. Obviously, you've got that stiffness of the carbon plate, uh, and they've got a nice amount of stability in them as well, so you don't feel like you're gonna sort of roll your ankle and drop to the floor. Um, something I'd love to see in the new shoe is maybe a little bit more cushioning for that sort of recovery element and those longer distances. Uh, and I quite like a shoe that sort of propels me up onto my toes, because I tend to be a little bit of a heel striker sometimes, so a bit of a rocking action would be, would be lovely. Yeah, and I think one of the key things with the RC Elite V2 is it was a very a very popular carbon plated shoe and it was a very friendly offering. You had lots of people calling it a friendly carbon plated shoe. It was mm. a little bit more comfortable perhaps and a bit more accommodating for, for more runners. Yeah. Um, and although that's a great trait to have, I think New Balance perhaps took that a little bit personally in the sense that they weren't known for having the fastest or most aggressive race day shoe, but they had one of the most comfortable. So I think you're dead right with the SC Elite V3, what you're gonna see is updates which overall make the the whole geometry and the experience underfoot far more aggressive and it should be far more comparable to some of those other options that you see on the market mm. yeah i mean you can see as well like just the thickness of them that they've sort of elevated that so mm. they look a little bit more aggressive and more of a maybe you know marathon shoe and maybe you know you go to this one for the 10k or half yeah absolutely and so i mean if we jump into some of the, the actual things that they have changed with with the shoe like you mentioned with the stack height the stack height is actually virtually identical to what we've got on the rc elite v2 but mm -hmm. we have got more stack in the forefoot area mm -hmm. which again for, for runners like myself landing more towards the midfoot to forefoot that's obviously great to have um, but the key change really is the geometry of, of the midsole. Like we've been, uh, been having a little play and rocking it backwards and forwards, but yeah. the, uh, the rocker on the SC Elite V3 is really quite significant, far more significant than what you find on the RC Elite V2. Um, and they're using a new, an all new carbon plate shape. Um, they call it Energy Arc technology, mm -hmm. but essentially with this massive groove that you've got in the midsole as well, it's designed just to store more energy and kind yeah. of propel you forwards through the gate cycle more uh, comprehensively, I suppose, than what you've got on the RC Elite V2. I know one of the things that we were talking about off camera as well is the significant update to the upper. Um, I personally didn't have too many issues with the upper of the RC Elite V2. I found, I don't know if you're the same, but I found that the tongue did have a tendency to move around a little bit. Yeah, it can run. slip around a little bit. Yeah, and I know some people had quite dramatic problems with the insole falling out of the shoe, which again, I didn't personally experience. Um, but in most carbon plated shoes, the, the sock line of the insole is glued down, um, whereas in the RC Elite V2, it isn't. Um, it is now partially glued down in the SC Elite V3, which should stop that from happening. 
Uh, and I know that you were a big fan of the inclusion of this kind of booty style construction that we've got with a tongue which, you know, literally can't move around anywhere. Um, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I'm looking forward to it just being like a bit of a snugger fit. You know, when you just put the shoe on and it feels like it's part of your feet, I kind of get that vibe from looking at the shoe. So I'm hoping that it feels like that as well. Yeah, definitely. But it's still obviously a super lightweight mono mesh upper. Like we've got a bit of cardboard in there now, but if you just put your fingers in there, you'd see it straight through. If you were to wear a particularly spangly sock, you'd <laughs> see it shining through the upper as well. Um, so in theory, the shoe has changed pretty much from the ground up to make it just a more aggressive and more race ready offering compared to the uh, RC Elite V2. All right, so talk us through the numbers then. What's the sort of spec comparison breakdown between these two shoes? Yeah, so the good thing in my opinion really is the fact that the weight has stayed almost identical. Mm -hmm. I think in a men's sample size, which is about an eight and a half, you're looking at 220-ish grams, which almost identical to what you got with the RC Elite V2. And in a women's sample size, it's about 170 grams, which again okay. is solid on on the scale really on that spectrum compared to other super shoes on the market uh, the drop is probably the thing which has changed the most whereas on the sc elite v3 we're looking at a four mil drop so quite a quite a big difference there um, and i know off camera you were saying that you you kind of prefer that uh, slightly flatter profile to a shoe yeah i feel like i don't know when there's sort of less of a drop i feel more sort of even in my stride i don't really need to be sort of propelled down onto my toes so much so i'm looking forward to sort of seeing how that feels and i think it's kind of suited to those longer distances as well where you can kind of really just get into that rhythm so yeah that's something that i'm excited about yeah and i know you've literally <laughs> tried these on your feet whilst we're on the train down here yeah. and that's all you've done I've done a little bit more than that. I've jogged in the kitchen okay. with them, um, <laughs> but still nothing remotely extensive. But I think for someone like yourself who does, like you say, tend to land slightly more towards the rear foot of the shoe, I think you're probably gonna experience that rocker like massively. I think you'll really experience the benefit of that just because of the, the sheer size of the, the cutout in the, in the midsole there. Um, in theory, it should mean that the, the shoe compresses uh, kind of independently. So if you come down more on the outside of the shoe, it will compress that side, but you'll, you'll remain nice and stable throughout your stride. Um, and with the new shape of the carbon fiber plate as well, it should propel you really nicely from uh, heel to, to toe. Yeah. Um, whereas for myself, like we say, that increased stack height in the forefoot should make it a more pleasant experience there too. So is there any difference in the foam? It looks pretty similar, but I don't know, when you compress this one, it maybe seems a little bit stiffer than the new ones. Yeah, so we, we were actually at the New Balance office in, in Manchester not that long ago, um, and I asked that specific question, like have we got the same fuel cell foam here that what you find on the RC Elite V2, what you find on the Rebel and, and all the other shoes that utilize fuel cell? And uh, the simple answer that I was given is that it's the same compound, but fuel cell will also always have slight variances across the board. So for me, purely from a subjective, ultra scientific squish test, it feels softer on the SC Elite yeah. 3 to me compared to what you've got on the RC Elite. Yeah, I didn't know whether that was just because I'd worn these and it may be sort of dried out a little bit or the sort of wear had made it get a bit stiffer but you can sort of notice it um, in, in the sort of the squish comparison. Yeah and, and I think those perceptions are important right like we can read off a tech sheet all day long but at the end of the day you want to know what the shoe feels like in hand you want to know what it feels like underfoot so regardless of what the the tech specs say and what, what you'll see on a stat sheet. I think actually getting the shoe in hand and on foot is the best way to kind of see all of the, the key differences that we've got between the two shoes. Yeah. All right, so I guess the last thing we need to cover off is sort of the outsole uh, and the tread and kind of grippability of the shoe. Yeah, so like we've, we've said a few times, you've got lots of miles in, uh, in the RC Elite V2. I found it to be incredibly durable, probably one of the most durable super shoes out there, to be yeah. honest. Um, and I know that uh, Leeds, Leeds Abbey Dash that you uh, renamed Leeds Abbey Splash yeah. <laughs> was an absolute washout, like absolute pouring rain the entire very, time. Very, very wet, yeah. Yeah, how did you get on with the RC Elite grip-wise in those sorts of conditions? Yeah, no issues with it. Um, per perfectly grippy and it was like literally flooded halfway around the course, sort of puddles and everything. Um, and also like nearly a hairpin turn at the end and no issues with that, you know, in terms of stability. So pretty good grip as it is. Yeah, and the good news is with the SC Elite V3, we've still got a solid amount of rubber coverage. Um, all the high key, uh, all the key high wearing areas are covered. 
Um, obviously, we've got this dramatic cutout and obviously the carbon fiber plate itself is far more exposed than the SC Elite V3, which is why we've got quite a nice little inclusion of, uh, of rubber coverage on the forefoot area of the carbon plate itself. Yeah. Um, again, it's, it's a pretty nasty feeling if you're running on canal towpath and you get like a stone hitting that carbon fiber plate. It makes a noise that, yeah, similar to like fingernails down the chalkboard for me. <laughs> so to have that covered right in the forefoot, a nice little touch yeah. um, and I, Obviously, neither of us have got any miles in these yet, but I don't see any reason why, when you look at the thickness of the coverage and you compare it to the RC Elite V2, I don't see any reason why you won't get uh, a couple hundred miles out of these easy and then, you know, at least another hundred of training miles after that. Yeah, and it looks like the tread's in all those important areas, like you say, and obviously this one's got a smaller cutout, but where it's bigger in this one, is that sort of like a space-saving, weight-saving feature? Because you're not really going to wear out that bit of tread anyway, so like, why is it there? Yeah, exactly. I think it's been a common trend on kind of the second and third iterations of Super Shoes. Mm -hmm. um, uh, originally, there were lots of very blocky midsoles, right? We didn't have too much tooling of those midsoles, whereas just recently, when you look across the board, there is significantly more tooling and, and more cutouts. All right, so that's the specs and all the numbers. Should we get on with the fun bit and uh, test them out in a session? Let's do it. Let's do it. Let's go. So, Philly, we're lacing up the shoes now. We're about to get into the session. You've got me doing a six mile high steady. Yeah. Now, I know that terminology in running <laughs> is an interesting thing, but yeah. what exactly does that mean? What sort of paces are we going to be uh, are we going to be running today? So, for me, it's sitting around sort of five fifty to low sixes, maybe six oh five. Okay. Um, so it's it's kind of in between a tempo and a steady run. So that's off, that's where you get the high steady from. <laughs> so it's six miles for the effort section. We'll do two easy and two easy. Too easy at the start to warm up and then too easy afterwards to cool down and yeah it sort of works that same system but where I raced a 10k two days ago on Sunday it's sort of a lighter session but still more effort than just going out for a steady run or an easy run. So hopefully we'll have a good run I mean typically it's starting to rain a little bit but nice temperatures today there's not much wind and this is a lovely little loop that we've got around Victoria Park so yeah. hopefully we'll, uh, we'll have a good one. Yeah excited to get going. So I got seven and a half hours sleep. Wonderful. So Philly, we finished the run. Yeah. Um, six miles, you've got it up on your watch. Do you want to give the, the people the, the stats and the figures of the run first Yeah, of all? so average pace, 558 minute miling. What's that in Ks? 558. Four, 342, something Test, like that. Testing the conversion. Best mile, 551. But pretty solid, pretty sort of steady at that pace. Uh, let's have a look at the splits. Two hours later. So we went 604, 557, 602, 554, 555, 556. Wonderful. And it's uh, like we said on the run, it's a nice flat loop, very little traffic. Um, yeah. I love doing sessions around here. It's almost exactly a mile all the way around. Um, you raced on, on Sunday. Yeah. How did your legs feel going into it and how did they feel on the run itself? Yeah, a little bit dommy. The quads are always a little bit stiff after a road race. So, but better today than yesterday, which is good. Um, but yeah, warmed up into it after the first sort of 200 meters, felt pretty good. Yeah. Uh, and it's, you know, it's taking it down a notch. You're comfortable at that sort of pace that you can keep going. So it's the right sort of session to do two days out after a race. And uh, yeah, it's nice to sort of be able to chat a little bit on yeah. the way around while we're doing it. Yeah. How, how did you find them overall? Like, you know, six miles in them now, um, a, a steady clip, like you say. What, what are your final thoughts on them? Yeah, really comfortable. They passed the blister test, so no signs of any sort of pain on that, on that side of things. And yeah, actually, you say, you know, you're not jogging along in them, but we, we did the cool, up, cool down uh, and the warm up in them, and they felt fine at that pace as well. But yeah, the one thing that I'm excited to do is test them out at like a much faster turnover because they feel really versatile, really comfortable at that sort Sort of pace can run slow in them if you want to as well to get that recovery benefit but uh yeah i kind of want to take them for a proper spin at like sort of 
some mile reps or some 800 meter reps now. I mean, for context sake, for those who, who might not know some of your PBs, like you ran 32 something at, at the weekend for a 10K? Just a little bit slower. So I ran 33, uh, 13. So, okay. but cool. it's um, not far off my, my, my time on the roads is sort of high 32s. So. Big negative split, right? You were shifting towards the end. Yeah, so, I picked yeah. it up on the way back. So uh, it's a nice way to run, coming home a little bit quicker. I think getting into just some, some final details and some final things when it comes to like the fit of the shoe, yours are a size five and a half, yep. right? That's the size that you normally go to. Did you find them to be true to size? For, yeah, for really true to size, actually. I've got a little bit of room to move my toes about. I know people say having about a thumb's width is sort of about right on the toe. Yeah. I like mine quite snug. Yeah. Um, and, you know, you put them on and they've got that sock feel. So you just tie up your laces and you're kind of ready to go. There's no sort of, I mean, an ahhing as to whether they're too tight or, or not. Um, they just sort of fit like a glove for my feet anyway. We've got a few looks while we were running around in in matching shoes and you've matched your top as well to the colours of the shoe. It's got to be done really hasn't it and uh, yeah I'm a sucker for some fine details on a shoe so like the slightly sparkly NYC branding on the side there and the New York City Marathon logo on the tongue. Just some really nice subtle touches to this limited edition colour drop. Um, it brings me on to a good point this colourway is the initial limited edition drop for New York City Marathon but we will have plenty more colourways coming soon in the new year but for now you can get this specific colour drop at prodirectrunning.com. That's it, I hope you guys enjoyed coming along for the session, hearing all about the new SC Elite V3. Make sure you leave a like and comment on your thoughts of the shoe and make sure you subscribe as well. And uh, yeah, come along for another video next time. See you in the next one. Come along for another video next time. Come along guys. Look.